Still undefeated at home. Let's go. Austin FC with that one nothing win against Minnesota United. What is up, everyone? My name is Ty Roder. I'm the host of the Verde and Black Show here on YouTube with your in-depth analysis and uh, look and recap of all things Austin FC. Last night, Q2 Stadium was popping. Um, still undefeated at home. We were able to get that one nothing victory, and it feels so, so nice, especially after that tie against San Jose, which ultimately felt like a loss. Um, Austin FC had a couple... Um, actually just, no, two changes, two changes in the lineup. You had Hector Jimenez in for Nick Lima at uh, right back, and then Ethan Finley um, starting, I believe actually, you know, I think he might have started against San Jose now that I'm thinking about it, so not necessarily a change, but a change from uh, what many felt was going to be a return for Cecilia Dominguez. Uh, that is a story in and of itself uh, with Dominguez uh, you know, getting his, his green card in Paraguay and now um, under investigation, a lot of speculation and um, not really sure exactly what um, it, it could be about. I know he had some off field issues um, prior to joining Austin FC, but, um, you know, what, what worries me about that is they haven't released uh, any information outside of that there's an investigation ongoing. So I, I feel like it, it must be pretty serious or else Austin FC and maybe MLS would, would have just suspended him for, for a game or two. Uh, it sounds like they're looking into uh, a lot greater detail. But the good news is, is without Cecilia Dominguez, Austin FC was still able to um, get that one nothing victory. The first half uh, against Minnesota United, you know, both teams looked like they were playing for a single point, which was kind of worrisome on the Austin FC side. You know, I understand Minnesota United coming on the road, um, wanting to, you know, potentially sneak out a victory in the second half. Uh, they were playing the first half pretty uh, relatively safe, as well as Austin FC. You know, I think both of these teams, you know, when the game started, we were tied at uh, eight points on the season. And uh, it you could tell it, this was a, a momentum, momentum game um, for Austin FC, you know. Uh, I, it's still early on in the season, but you, you hate to drop those those two points at San Jose when we were up two nothing. So being able to come on the road, you know, it felt like both teams were were trying to avoid any mistakes in the first half, and it was a really sluggish first half, uh, not a whole lot of action. Um, so going into the second half, you know that that goal that Aruzzi had, um, it was nice. I mean, he 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 basically played. Uh, a, a dummy roll there, going down injured in the box, um, grasping at his leg um, and flailing, uh, and then somehow miraculously is able to get up and uh, and just be in the right spot at the right time for Hector Jimenez to whip that ball in um, and, and slide it past the goalkeeper. Um, you know, Austin FC did have a couple of, of, of good chances. I know I personally thought uh, Ring had a, had a really bad game. He just looked absolutely um, out of place, out of character. Um, I don't want to say that's a trend for Ring, but it, it seems like he'll he'll have a game or two where he's on and then he'll have a game or two where he's off. And unfortunately, as the captain, you know, a lot of the onus is put on him. And I mean, we got the win, but you, you just can't be having our captain, you know, one, lose the ball in our defensive third, and two, just miss really clear opportunities. I mean, he had one shot, I want to say, I think it was in early in the second half, might have been late in the first half, where, you know, he tees it up right outside the box, and it was it was such a terrible whiff. I mean, it, it was probably 10 to 12 yards wide of the post. Um, just no technique there, uh, and that's frustrating. You know, as the season goes on, I think Ring will, will continue to, to carry that that uh, captain's armband, but honestly, I'd be okay with it going to Fagundes, maybe Driussi, um, if, if Ring starts to falter a little bit. And, you know, maybe uh, Josh Wolf needs to um, let him recollect, focus focus on himself, uh, and, and start Johan Valencia um, in, in the center for a game or two. Uh, I'd be okay with that as well. Um, so Aruzzi got that goal. Um, you could tell that United were trying to um, come back, which really opened up the game. 
Um, I really liked John Gallagher coming in for for Kolmanich. Uh, Kolmanich, I, I still think is is solid. I was surprised to see Jimenez in for Nick Lima. I think Nick Lima kind of showed as to why he is. Uh, the starter. Jimenez did have that nice ball into Aruzzi, but uh, I, I I personally prefer uh, Nick Lima in there. And and to be honest, you know, I was kind of surprised um, Josh Wolf bringing in his, his son, Owen Wolf. Uh, not necessarily because I, I don't think um, Owen Wolf is, is subpar by any means, but uh, in a one nothing game, it just seems like a, a strange time. You know, maybe Wolf is is echoing that sentiment of, of Ring just looked out of place and maybe he thought that his son uh, couldn't do much worse than what Ring was providing to the team at that time. And then it was so nice to see Danny Hosen come in for a routine. I was just hoping that, you know, he would get the ball in, inside the box or maybe outside the box and be able to to put one away um, after that, you know, that disastrous last year with his injury. And there was so much hope for him. Um, so it feels good to see him back back in the squad. Um, we, we controlled possession, you know, 57% of possession. We had 11 shots, five on goal, uh, a couple of yellow cards. But overall, my takeaway from this game, I personally think we were kind of lucky. Um, you know, we, we missed some clear opportunities. And the first 60 minutes up until Aruti scored were really sluggish on Austin FC's part. Um uh, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed. I, I know, you know, you take three points where you can get them, but um, it, I, I'm still not confident in the way that we play. Um, we're playing from the back way too much. I don't know if Josh Wolf is just trying to drill that into our defensive shape and, and Stuber from playing from the back, but there were a couple of chances that Minnesota United have from just dumb giveaways in the defensive third. So, I you know, I don't know what else um, our defensive third can do. Um, Gabrielson, you know, wasn't a, wasn't a sore thumb today, thankfully. Um, it, it seems like every game I, I'm stressed as to whether Gabrielson is going to just hand the ball off to the opposing starting center forward. Uh, and luckily, he didn't really do that. But um, it, it just feels very uncharacteristic for you know center backs and a, a, a well-balanced goalkeeper to be given the ball away so often and basically creating chances for the opponent so I'd like to see maybe Wolf try to go away from that um, luckily we haven't been we haven't really been burned um, necessarily I know Ring has had a couple of bad mishaps uh, in the defensive third and that have resulted in goals in previous games but uh, our defense was was able to be um, solid for for a majority of this game. Um, outside of Reynoso, Minnesota United didn't have a whole lot of, of offensive attack. Um, my my player of the game, um, I, I like to do a couple of, of players depending on how the outcome of the game goes. Um, I, I really thought that I wouldn't have a player of the game. Um, you know, I give it to Aruti just because of, of his goal, goal scoring prowess. I like what he does um, from the standpoint of, of a center forward. I think he's our clear center, starting center forward. Um, I'd like to see him be able to put away chances a little bit better, uh, primarily because I don't want to see, I don't want Drew Usi to have all that, the pressure of, of being the goal scorer. I think Drew Usi can handle the pressure of being our, our goal scorer, um, along with Fagundes and obviously Dominguez when, when he was in the squad, but Aruti needs to take some some ownership of that center forward position and start scoring consistently, um, and then I'll feel a lot more confident about our offense. Uh, Drew is going to get his goals. Fagundes is going to get his goals. It's a matter of if our center forward position can ultimately uh, provide some something day in and day out. And up until probably the past two weeks, we really hadn't seen much. I know Aruti, you know, had been solid. Um, you know, just being a clog in, in the squad the first couple of games, but it, it seems like he's really coming on into his own. And I'd like to see it continue, you know, maybe a goal, I'm not necessarily saying he needs to score every game, but, you know, a goal every two or three games would be nice from um, from Aruti. Uh, so he, he is my player of the game. I look forward to uh, uh, hopefully going to a game here soon at Q2 Stadium. Uh, if you'd like to this video or any of my previous videos, feel free to like and subscribe. You know, I do this for fun. Uh, 
just kind of break down Austin FC, what I saw. Um, yeah, thank you so much and uh, take care y'all.